I like old Hornby diesels and I like slow running trains on my layout. But I have insole frog points, some of which are even older than my locos. So as things stood, these things were not compatible and these initial videos show the problem. Even at these speeds, which are faster than I would normally like, the Class 25 stalled on the points. The reason is simple. These older models have traction tyres and current pickup is therefore only from one side. The unpowered bogey also only picks up current from one side. On uneven track and point work, a stall at low speeds is almost inevitable. Adding extra pickups to the unpowered bogey would mean that all four wheels would now be picking up current, which should solve the problem. I purchased a pickup kit from Eileen's Emporium, which contained everything I needed and more to add extra pickups to a number of locos. If you have never added pickups before, this kit is a great starting point. It contains two sheets of printed circuit board, phosphor bronze pickup wire, phosphor bronze strip, red and black wire, and even some solder. The first task was to cut a small piece of printed circuit board and glue it to the underside of the unpowered bogey. When this was dry, a piece of half millimetre pickup wire was soldered to it, with both ends bearing lightly on the backs of the bogey wheels, making sure to avoid the moulded plastic gears. The final stage was to solder the wire which connects the bogey to the motor, the red wire in the picture. There is not much clearance under the bogey, so soldering must be neat and tidy to avoid the loco grounding over point work. And that's it. Later in the video, we will see the improvement this simple task makes. Hornby saw fit to put an off-centre pivot on the underframe, which should act as a partial support for the unpowered bogey. It's the black one in this picture. This may be the reason why older Hornby diesels lean to one side, although I'm not totally sure. Others on various forums have suggested that another pivot be added to balance things up. The black pivot was carefully measured for height and position and another one, the grey one in the picture, was made and glued in place. The white plasticard surrounds are to help position it correctly. This did correct the lean a little but not enough so a further alteration was necessary. It is thought that Hornby originally considered fitting a smoke unit to the Class 25. This would have been placed under the exhaust outlet in the roof, which is not in the centre of the roof but offset to one side. The pivot was therefore offset to the other side of the chassis to help compensate for the now unequal weight distribution. The smoke unit was never fitted, so the uneven weight distribution remained. The simple solution therefore seemed to be to add some weight on the side of the chassis where the smoke unit would have been. Lead sheet was cut into oblongs and glued in. This seems to have worked and has corrected the body lean as can be seen later. It also has added much needed weight which assists current pickup. The Hornby cab interiors are easily removed, so at this stage they were repainted in more appropriate colours. I have mentioned in previous videos that shiny models with shiny black underframes just don't look realistic. Simple repainting and weathering techniques can improve their appearance no end. I normally start with the underframes. The chassis, buffers, couplings and bogies were all treated to a dirty brown mix which was stippled on with an old brush. Whilst the paint was still wet, 
Areas such as axle boxes, springs and fuel tanks were highlighted by adding a dark, nearly black colour. I wanted the loco to represent 25052, which worked at par during the period modelled, so my model needed renumbering. The 25 part of the existing number was retained and the rest removed. I used T-cut and applied it with a cotton bud. Taking time and with a lot of gentle and careful rubbing, the numbers can be removed without damaging the surrounding paint. I decided to paint the centre sections of the roof grey. At this stage I thought I would leave the exhaust outlet and ventilation grill black, so they were masked off with masking fluid. The rest of the body was masked off and the roof sprayed. By now I had sourced a photo of the real loco at par in 1979 which was invaluable in deciding how to weather my 25052. To make a start on the body a dirty brown mix, slightly different to that used on the chassis, was made up. Using a flat brush, this was dry brushed on the lower body sides and the various grills. The paint was sparingly applied using vertical strokes to simulate dirt, rust etc stains, some of which may have run down the body sides due to the laws of gravity. The cab ends were given a thin wash of the same dirty colour, completely covering the yellow paint. When this was touch dry, most of it was removed using a cotton bud moistened with enamel thinners. Some will be left behind, highlighting features such as lamp irons, handrails and the gaps around the doors. Some nearly white paint was added to simulate where the yellow paint had flaked away. New inserts were constructed for the head code boxes at each end. Once painted, precision labels self-adhesive domino head codes were added. The new numbers 052 were added to the cab sides using HMRS Methfix transfers. The completed loco was then given a light airbrushing of the same colour as the grills and lower body to blend everything together and then it was ready to enter service. At this stage and looking at the photo of the real 25052 I realised I didn't like the roof as it was so decided to respray it. I used a darker grey this time and did not mask off any areas of the body or roof. By carefully airbrushing with the airbrush held directly above the roof I was able to avoid a hard edge where the grey of the roof joins the blue of the sides. End views of the completed loco showing how the lean has been corrected. The completed loco poses for photos at Pastiche Station. And finally, a clip of the loco in action on the layout. Negotiating the same points as in the earlier shots, but this time slowly and with no problems. I think it runs and looks great. That's all for now. See you next time.